Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on how you can and should add team members on your direct sales team with the desire to keep them for life. I'll share with you my best three tips on how to keep your head in the game, and I'll also give you a blueprint of my marketing appointment. I love team building for obvious reasons. You can make a great deal of money with a strong team versus working all by yourself. However, too many people come into direct sales and start team building without taking the time to think about how their actions can affect people's lives. I may have started team building in the early days of my career because the bonuses and commissions were great, but I quickly developed a passion for team building because of how direct sales can truly change people's lives. My life will never be the same again because of direct sales, and because of this understanding, I have a great reverence for how important it is to add team members not only passionately, but responsibly. For my very first year in direct sales, I made it my personal mission to share with people the great news. If you've watched my video on the 10 reasons why direct sales can be a job killer, you've heard all the reasons why people should find a direct sales company and start right away. So I won't go through all the reasons again in this video. In this video, I'm going to share with you the psychology behind what your prospects are thinking and how you can dissolve any walls they may have built up so that your heart can speak to theirs freely. In 2007, I broke my company's 44 year record in recruiting. I'll forever remember sitting backstage waiting to be escorted out as part of the top 10 lineup. The staff provided chairs for everyone to sit and wait, and they had us assigned in random seats. One of the top 10 members turned around and asked me, So, how many people did you recruit this year? I replied, and judging by her reaction, her numbers must have been way more than mine, because I could see in her face that she had so ruled me out as any viable competition for the throne. I didn't care. I was just grateful to be there. And having been runner-up to the queen twice, I had resolved myself to the idea that chances are I probably wouldn't earn the throne again. So you can imagine her surprise and my surprise later that evening when I was crowned the queen. Later backstage while we were finishing up our photo shoot for the company's publication, the same person asked me, would you mind sharing with me what your commissions were this year? The company's count-up was based on commissions earned, not numbers of people recruited. I've been in direct sales for 16 years, and I've been on my company's top 20 in recruiting at least nine times, twice as a runner-up to the queen and twice as the queen. In 2011, when I earned the queen's position again, I did it again with low numbers of recruits, but high numbers of commissions. I work hard at the beginning of the year to add more people than I do towards the end. The reasoning behind this is I want a lot of time to work with them throughout the year to teach my people how to sell the products, reorder the products, and sell the products again. This process of selling and reordering again and again is key to helping people make money in direct sales. The really exciting part is when you can transfer your skills to your team member where they can do it on their own without any assistance from you. That is a thrilling day. This is the takeaway I would love for everyone to leave this video with. When you are adding team members onto your sales team, you want to add people you actually want to work with. You want to add people with the intentions of teaching them everything you know. And you want to add people with the desire to improve their lives through direct sales. If your heart is in the right place, then passion is way not hard to harness. You want your passion to be so strong that you can blow people over with it. How can you find this passion and this conviction? Easy. Just push yourself to have a thousand dollar week in sales. And please do not take forever to do this either. I'm going to be doing a series soon on the different personalities people have and how each personality operates. But in the meantime, if you know that you take forever to get things done, then I am talking to you right now. Stop trying to be perfect and go out and sell something. If I can have a brand new baby consultant on my team go out and sell $1,000 in one day because she's crazy excited and passionate about three things in our product line, then you too can do the same. Pick the top three things you love in your product line and go sell them. Do not stop. 
do not rest and do not eat until you sell a thousand dollars worth. The Bible tells us that fasting and praying is good for us. So go fast and pray. <laughs> When you can do this consistently, then selling people on the idea that they too can make money in direct sales is not hard. The key to my success is making sure that I keep my head in the game. Here are my best tips on how you can do the same. Tip number one on how to keep your head in the game is to sell yourself before you try to sell anyone else. If you are not yet convinced on your company's marketing plan, then you've already lost. Stop. Do not pass go. You've got to study your company's marketing plan. Memorize it and know it backwards and forwards. Then simplify it in your own words and try to see if you can explain it to a five-year-old. One of humanity's greatest minds, Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, then you just don't understand it well enough. So mission one is to understand it and then simplify it so you can explain it. You know, my first tip goes hand in hand with most people's first concern. That is the fear of the unknown. You can squash that fear by lending them faith in you. If you are solid as a rock, they can easily lean on your understanding and leadership. But if you are wavering, people are less likely to follow someone they cannot trust to lead them. Tip two to keep your head in the game is to define clearly where you are going and what you want to do. This is essential to keeping your faith high and your armor strong. You will hear a lot of no's in direct sales. Just in case you're unaware, you do know you're in sales, right? You're gonna hear a lot of no's in sales, and I have a secret to help you almost become bulletproof. If you know your mission, then you can not only dodge the no bullets, but you can withstand them as well. You'll laugh at all the silly no's in your mind when you know where you are going. My mission changed a lot throughout the years, but I'll share a few with you to give you a few examples. My first year's mission was to stay home with my baby girl. I cried every time I told people that. I was able to quit my job in six months from starting. Then I wanted to earn the company's top trophy on wheels. I wanted that new car smell. I wanted to hear the ding when I put the key in the ignition. And I wanted to feel what plush seats felt like. And of course, <laughs> I also wanted the mean people who didn't think I could do it to see me drive by them in my shiny new car and wave at them. <laughs> prospective customers and prospective team members that I told about this laughed at me. But you know, when we had our car party, I had people say things like, I helped earn that bumper on that car. To the lady who said she helped me earn the bumper, she was happy to be helpful and I was grateful for her help. Then. I wanted to earn a crazy five carat diamond ring so I could show my mom that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. And then I wanted to earn a trip overseas so I could thank my husband for all his support and I wanted to do it in a big way. This reminds me of one of my favorite stories. You guys up for a story? My husband used to work for a grocery store. I remember one day, way before I got into direct sales and when we were both still working for other people, Jonathan had just finished um, a 12 hour or so shift. I knew he was tired because he left a trail of his clothes on the floor from his tie to his socks to his pants leading to the bedroom. He couldn't get into the bed fast enough, but our phone rang and it was his door. Apparently, the manager for the next shift did not show up, so he had to get up, pick up his pants and his tie, and back to work he went. I think he worked 24 hours straight that time. I'd like to say that this was an oddity, but it wasn't. He used to work so hard that he would get stress migraines that would put my six foot one Marine in the bed for hours, and he would spend many sleepless nights in pain. The year we earned the trip to Italy through our company, I remember waking up one night because of the sounds of the fountain outside below our balcony. I must have left the double glass door open and the warm breeze was flowing inside our villa suite. The night was warm and beautiful and I looked up to see the dancing light of the moon playing off the large crystal chandelier above our bed. It was like looking at a kaleidoscope of stars above me. I wondered if I could see the night sky as clearly, so I walked out onto the balcony and I felt as if I was dreaming. The sights, 
sounds and feeling of that blessed night was breathtaking. I knew this was my life, but it was so far removed from the life we once had. I looked inside the room and my husband was fast asleep. That night, I remembered that it wasn't long ago that he couldn't sleep, and now he was sleeping like a baby. I cried, and I gave thanks to God for my charmed life and prayed for continued obedience. Do you have a mission? Is it solid in your mind? Do you believe in your path so much so that it does not matter what people say about you or your intentions? Will you still walk your path and fulfill your mission? Sure, some people will say, I worked hard for my family, and yes, I did. But there's also a flip side to that same coin. I worked doubly hard to share with people that they can do it too. That they have a charmed life waiting for them as well. That they too can have and achieve anything that they choose to set their minds on. This belief in your mission is what will make you laugh at the little, little knows that come your way. My favorite scripture of all times is Romans 12 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you have your mission clear and your path set, you will help overcome the second obstacle most of your prospects may have, and that is lack of faith. Some people do not have passion, a mission, or a path. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you can renew their vigor for life, breathing some happiness, joy, and fun back into what can be very mundane for most people? There's nothing wrong with the seven-year-old you asking your prospect's seven-year-old kid that's locked up inside them to come on out and play. My third tip to helping you keep your head in the game is to speak with your heart. Say what you want to say. Just don't be mean about it. People ask me all the time, what do you say to get people to say yes? How do you say it? When do you say it? My answer is, I don't know. I just say it when I feel it. Just remember the guideline. Don't be obnoxious about it. Don't be mean and don't be vulgar. Just say what you need to say. Someone says to you, I don't know if I can do it. You say, well, why not? <laughs> they tell you why and you say what your heart wants you to say. Trust me on this one. If you understand your marketing plan, if you know how to make money in your company because you've done it, if you're committed to helping them by teaching them everything you know, if you have a mission and you are not afraid to share it, then the words will come. If your heart is in the right place, the words will come. I've had many times when people will say to me, I can't believe you just said that to me. And I would reply, well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know, people love me for it, and they follow me for it. Even when I train people on this super simple way to speak to prospective customers and team members, people still insist on asking me for the words to help overcome the most common objections. And I'm used to share them with people. But here's what I've learned. When you memorize a script, as opposed to speaking from your heart, most people will see or feel through your inauthenticity. Now, I'm not saying you're trying to be fake. I am saying that this is what people feel when you don't have ownership of your words, especially when those words are not true to your personality. My best advice for you on how to overcome objections is not to. When your potential team member gives you an objection, what they are saying is, I am afraid, or I have more questions, or I just don't want to do it. It's one of the three. I've already addressed the fear factor. The I have more question issue is easy too. Take a few minutes and write down what you think the most common objections and questions would be. They most likely are something along the lines of, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I will have the time. I don't have the money to invest, etc. Now using your own words, how can you help your potential new team member with this problem? A formula I've learned that has been very helpful to me is the feel felt found guides. In order for these words to work though, you must truly believe them. Remember, don't ever say what you don't mean or believe. It's obviously wrong and a total waste of time. If they sense that you're not above board, then they won't join. And if they do, then it was most likely because of the good opportunity, but they will question your intentions and leadership for the rest of their career. You are better off keeping a great customer than trying to convince someone who's not that interested to begin with. Here's how Feel Felt Found works. I understand how you feel. I felt the same way too. Or someone I know felt the same way too. What I found or what they found was. The point of this exercise is to 
acknowledge the person's fear and to confirm to them that you heard them. The felt portion helps them realize that they're not alone. No, they're not strange or silly or weird. Other people have had the same concerns as well and what they found through experience was just what that old adage says. You never know until you try and once you do, you realize it really wasn't nearly as bad as the soap opera we play out in our minds to begin with. And lastly, you need to be wise and listen when someone says no to you. Most people have a really hard time with saying no. So listen with your heart and be kind. When someone does not want to do it, they give you really silly objections one after another. Somewhere around the third silly objection, you need to let the poor person go. They don't want to do it. Don't give salespeople a bad name, guys. There's a difference between passion and pushiness. One is charming and the other is annoying. Cut it out. So those are my best three tips. Tip one was to sell yourself first. Understand your marketing plan and simplify it in your explanation. Tip two was to define clearly where you are going and what you want to do and share it with your prospective customers and team members. People love to support a cause, especially when it is personal and real. Tip three was to speak from your heart. Say what you want to say, when you want to say it, in a kind way. The overview of what I call sharing your marketing plan is super simple. I look at it like writing a paper. You have an opening, you have a body, and you have a close. Don't drag it out. You can do a marketing appointment on the phone or in person. In person is ideal because there's a lot of things that can get lost in translation when they cannot see your body language and hear your heart. You also will miss out on their physical cues as well if you're not looking at them face to face, knee to knee. You can use this format in as short as 10 minutes and as long as hours. Please, please don't take up hours of people's time. It's inconsiderate and a waste of your energy. I've gone into a marketing appointment before and my heart just kind of knew that the person was in. So I just said, want to join my team? And she said, yeah. And we had lunch while my new team member, who was along for the training, sat in awe and confused. If you're a consultant in my unit, I actually was lucky enough to record this, so you can listen to this live under our audio training section of our unit support website. It'll make you laugh. So here's the blueprint. You open by thanking your prospect for their time, sharing with them how long the appointment will take, and explaining to them that you're going to share your marketing plan with them in hopes that they will join your team, but they should not feel obligated to anything. Let them know that you're only interested in sharing information and securing a relationship with them for life whether it be as a customer or as a team member. I hope it goes without saying that you really always should speak to customers about the business opportunity. When you bypass this step and you have not secured them as a customer yet, well, it's just a mess. I'm not gonna go into that. Think of it this way. The best customers make the best sellers of the product. Capiche? The body of your talk should cover a very, very, very short success story about you. How and why you started and what you love so far in your direct sales career. Did I say very short? Very, very short. Like two minutes max. There will be plenty of time for your prospects to ask more about your story if they're interested later. This way, you're still respectful of their time and you always want to leave people wanting more. Next, you give them five key points of your marketing plan. When I say five key points, I literally mean five sentences with no elaboration. Why? Because you want to only speak about things that are of interest to your prospect. You are sharing the five sentences really to give them a place to begin asking questions. Next, I would ask them, if this business opportunity could change your financial life forever, what would you like to know to be able to make a decision? Then I answer all the questions. The last step is to close. I would say something along the lines of, if you have my assurance that you will get the support you need from me, is there any reason why you would not like to join my team? I would love to work with you if you'd like to work with me. Make it personal. Guys, the person that said not to take things personal in business and that it's just business, well, in my opinion, that person is either a thief or a scoundrel trying to justify bad behavior. I'm sorry, business is personal. And if you miss that, then I feel bad for the miserable business you have to work in every day. My health, your health. My happiness, your happiness. And peace of mind is more important to me than the advance 
of business at the expense of my joyful spirit. You know, Proverbs 23, 4-5 shares with us not to wear yourself out to get rich. Have the wisdom to show restraint. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. <laughs> so guys, here's the deal. Closing is not hard when you are in front of the right person and you've done the right things and said the right things. The answer will be yes. If you think closing is hard, then I encourage you to go back to my top three tips and try again. Be happy, be joyful, be passionate, and be unapologetic about your position and you will be a fisherman of men. People won't be able to help but jump in your boat while you continue to practice. If you ever find yourself short on time because you have so many people to talk to or you're unable to get together with busy people, I've put together some really great videos that you can use to your advantage. Ask your prospect to watch the video called the 10 reasons why direct sales is a job killer or how to find the right direct sales company for you. Or if you're in MK with me, then you can use my video called an inside look at MK, my 16 years experience in direct sales. Then you can just follow up with them and ask them, what do they think? Adding team members should not be a grueling process. And if it is, then the person that's causing you so much grief really should not be in direct sales. The right person at the right time after hearing your heart will say yes. And if they don't, then they're either not the right person or it's not the right time. Save yourself some heartache and don't push it. Just reach out your hand and say, you know, this may not be right for you right now. But can we shake on it that if anything ever changes and you become interested, can we agree that you will join my team and no one else's? On your word, I'd love to secure our relationship moving forward that you will stay my customer as long as I give you faithful service. And guys, that's all you can do. Blessings come and blessings go. People come and some stay for a lifetime and some stay for just a season. Don't cry over lost opportunities. As far as I'm concerned, they were never really opportunities to begin with. They were lessons. And if you push something that was not meant to be, then they could turn into a plague in your business or worse in your life. So I encourage you to work with passion and put your all into it. Then rest with the satisfaction that you did your best. And thank God for the blessings and also thank him for the missed curses. If this video has been helpful to you, please like and subscribe. If you love my videos and would like to create some of your own, there's a link below in my description section for a free seven day trial of the software. If you wouldn't mind following the link, it would give me a credit discount on my use. You guys know how I love to save money. If you have any topics you would like for me to cover to help you in either growing your business, saving money, or maintaining a joy filled life, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to put it on my to-do list. Also, please consider sharing your success stories below as well. It will be a great encouragement to others that they can do it too. I hope you have a spectacular recruiting year. Pray for faith. You can do it. Bye-bye.